Welcome to video three of who knows how many videos in which I'm going to teach you more about acid-base equilibrium. In this video, I'm going to teach you about the acid-base properties of water. I'll also teach you about strong acids and strong bases, as well as pH and pOH. You ready? Let's get started. So this might sound really weird, but in real life, water acts as both an acid and a base according to the following equation. As you look at this closely, I've got two molecules of water interacting. One of them gives up a hydrogen or a proton to the other. That then forms hydroxide and hydronium. From what we discussed in the last video, you can see that one of these molecules here acts as an acid while the other acts as a base. By extension, hydroxide, which arose from this water acting as an acid, is its conjugate base, and hydronium, which is formed from this water's acceptance of a proton, is this water's conjugate acid. So once again, water can act both as an acid and as a base. Here's another figure showing this process, which is called the auto-ionization of water. We can imagine pictorially this water molecule giving up its hydrogen to its neighbor. The neighbor then becomes hydronium H3O+, and leaves hydroxide behind. Once again, this water molecule is the acid because it gave up a hydrogen, while this water molecule is the base because it accepted the hydrogen. And by extension, this is the conjugate base, and this is the conjugate acid. Believe it or not, water is actually doing this all the time, albeit with relatively low amounts of hydroxide and H+. A substance that can simultaneously act as both an acid and a base is called an amphoteric or amphiprotic substance. Now, because water's autoionization has the following chemical equation, its equilibrium constant expression, which we call Kw for some reason, because we want to have as many different and confusing kinds of Ks as possible, is this. You'll notice, as we described earlier when I was discussing Ka values, that water, H2O liquid, does not appear in this expression anywhere because it's a liquid. Once again, liquids and solids are omitted from equilibrium constant expressions. Now, as it turns out, at 25 degrees Celsius anyway, Kw, this equilibrium constant for water, equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, which means that the concentrations of hydroxide and hydronium multiplied together equal that number. Now, you, my students, should definitely memorize this number, as we'll be using it extensively later on. Now, another detail. A solution in which the concentration of H plus and OH minus, or you could say H3O plus here instead of H plus. Remember that they're kind of interchangeable with us lazy chemists just wanting to write H plus instead of H3O plus. <gasps> anyway, the point is, when these concentrations are equal, that solution is said to be neutral. We'll talk more about this further on. As I mentioned earlier in a previous video, to which I'll link here, strong acids dissociate almost completely making their reaction arrows be pretty much one way, like this, where I have my acid, my base, my conjugate base, and my conjugate acid. Now there are seven strong acids whose names and formulas I require you to memorize. Those acids are these. My students, I require you to memorize these names and these formulas. And I would honestly be a crappy teacher if I didn't. These are the strong acids. Now I'm gonna teach you about strong bases. The most common water-soluble strong bases are hydroxides that are stuck to group 1, or alkali metals, such as sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, as well as to group 2, alkaline earth metals, such as calcium or strontium hydroxides. Group 1 hydroxides dissociate like this in water, where M is my group 1 metal. It releases hydroxide in water and forms a metal cation. Examples include sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide as well as others that I'm not showing here. Group two hydroxides dissociate like this in water, where eventually the substance will give off two equivalents of hydroxide and become a plus two charged cation. Examples of these include calcium and strontium hydroxide, as well as others that I'm not showing here. Now we'll teach you about pH. Scientists have developed a simple system for reporting how acidic or basic a solution is. This system is called the pH scale. Simply put, pH mathematically is equal to the negative log of H+. Also, for reasons that I will now prove to you, on the board, the concentration of H+, is equal to 10 raised to the negative pH. Please remember once again that H+, and H3O+, are sort of the same thing. Now, generally speaking, the pH scale goes from 0 to 14. Because the concentrations of base and acid equivalents multiplied together in an aqueous system equals this number, for the hydroxide and H0 concentrations to be equal, if you're at neutral solution, 
they both have to be 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. When the hydroxide concentration equals the hydronium concentration then, pH is equal to the negative log of H+, plus, which is the same thing as the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7, which comes out to be 7. Hence, neutral pH, the pH at which hydroxide concentration and hydronium concentration are the same, is equal to 7. Here's how the rest of the pH scale breaks down. If your pH is below 7, then your solution is acidic. In that scenario, the concentration of H+, plus or H3O+, plus, is larger than the concentration of hydroxide. At pH 7, you're at neutral pH, where the concentrations of these two species are equal. Above 7, you're at basic pH, where the concentration of hydroxide is larger than the concentration of hydronium. Now, as it turns out, there's also something called pOH, which is defined as follows. pOH is equal to negative log concentration of hydroxide. And here's something else you should definitely know. Please, my students, memorize this. pH plus pOH is always equal to 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. When you're armed with these equations, there's a buttload of things you can figure out, as I'll show you now with a wonderful example problem. What is the pH of an aqueous solution of this concentration of HBr? It's a strong acid. I invite you to attempt this on your own, and if you like, you can then click on the link here to a separate video in which I will do it for you on the whiteboard. And now this question. Calculate the pH of a strong acid solution of 5 milliliters of this concentration of perchloric acid diluted to 50 milliliters. Once again, you're welcome to attempt this on your own, and then if you like, you can click this link to watch me do it for you on the board. And now this problem. Changing the pH from 1 to 3 means that the proton concentration, or hydronium ion concentration, does what? Now this problem. Calculate the hydroxide concentration and pH for 1.5 times 10 to the negative third molar solution of strontium hydroxide. Once again, you're welcome to attempt this on your own, and then if you like, you can click the link here to a separate video in which I will show you how to do it on the board. And now another. Calculate the hydroxide ion concentration of pH of a solution formed by adding 5 milliliters of this concentration of KOH to 15 milliliters of this concentration of calcium hydroxide. Once again, I invite you to try this on your own. Then if you want, you can click this link, which will take you to a separate video where I answer it for you on the board. And now our last question. Calculate the hydroxide, I, uh, calculate the hydroxide ion concentration and pH of a 2.25 grams of lithium hydroxide diluted in 250 mL solution. And lastly, what is the pOH of an aqueous solution at 25 degrees C that contains this concentration of hydronium? As always, you're welcome to click the link here if you like, after attempting it on your own, to see me do it for you on the board. That's the end of this lecture. Please stay tuned to the next one, in which I'll continue teaching you about acid-base equilibrium. Until next time, have an enjoyable rest of your day.